Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Fighter, Goblin Rogue. Party have just killed Graves, but Tiber and Milana have escaped. House is in shambles. Fighter almost immediately skins and debones Graves. Rogue looks on in a mixture of disgust and admiration as the fighter proceeds to make daggers out of his ribs. I'd like to start to fire and put Graves' head on it. What? JPG. Rolls perception to find supplies. After a bit of searching and some help from the rogue, fighter builds the tinder for a fire. If he had the ability to, the fighter would raise an eyebrow as rogue lights the tinder with a fire bolt. Rogue shrugs but doesn't explain. Fighter dumps Graves head on fire. Fighter looks around before settling on the ropes that used to hold Tiber. Using a kitchen knife, he cuts off a length of the rope. As rest of party gather supplies in the house, including a backpack and some money, Fighter asks me if the skin has melted off yet. I tell him it's just a skull, but the bottom jaw has broken off. He uses Graves arm to roll the skull out of the fire and waits for it to cool down before he wipes away the soot. Looks at it for a second before he decides to break a hole on either side. Feeds rope through and breaks bottom of cranial cavity. Ties rope around his waist so skull rests upside down on side of his waist. MFW he turned Graves into a bag. Party congregate back in the room. Sorcerer what now? Table goes silent. Ranger finally speaks up. We can't sleep here. Milana will regenerate soon and she's been invited in. If we sleep here, we'll die. Party agree with logic. Except Rogue. Okay. I don't understand a word you're saying. Ranger turns to him. Here no safe. Rogue, we're going to leave the city? Do have house? No, I only just got here a week ago. I've been staying in an inn, but I haven't paid my dues for the last two days, so they'll probably kick me out. Fighter, we money now. Buy weapon. Then leave. Party eventually decide to leave Zanimat and sleep outside the city and return in the morning. Ranger turns to other lizard folk. We won't need disguises tomorrow. Milana won't dare attack if she sees us all together. Sorcerer, she won't attack, but if we don't deal with her, she's still a threat. She'll tell Highwater about us and then we're in for it. Cleric, that's true. We don't want Highwater knowing about us until it's too late for him to do anything. Ranger shakes his head. No. There's every chance he already knows about us. Milana and Graves knew we killed Farron. Word will move faster than we can. Fighter, we have to go on the assumption Highwater knows about us. If he does, maybe we can lure him into the open. If we kill him, we destroy the threat to the swamp. Rogue grabs a chair and stands on it so he's almost head height with everyone. You know what? I like you guys. You killed Graves and you can fight off Milana. But if Yael don't start speaking common I swear to god, I'm going to hit something. Party stare at him for a moment. Sorry. Rogue nods. Yeah. So, what's the plan? Ranger, we leave city. We back morning. Rogue claps his hands together. Okay then. Let's go. Party leaves Animate and head out to a nearby hill. There's no cover around the hill so party confident Milano can't sneak up. Organize a watch order and party sleep. No incident during the night though Rogue does see a figure staring at them from the city's walls on his watch. Least to say, it takes him a while to get to sleep. Next morning, party Ray enters Animate. Very happy to see sunlight. Party make their way to several stores, and using most of their money, buy two light crossbows, one for Rogue, one for Ranger, and a bit of food for the Rogue, since he isn't keen on eating humanoid meat. Ranger pissed he can't get a longbow, but they don't have the funds to buy one and other necessities. Fighter ends up picking up a spear and a hand axe, because doesn't want to spend too much money. Party watch with intrigue as Goblin casts Disguise Self on himself to appear as a gnome. 
Sorcerer frowns. How do? Goblin shrugs. I got a few tricks. Goes up to cartographer. Pays for a map. Party leaves Animate again, wanting to get out of the city lest they encounter Milana or guards. As they leave, Rogue pulls out map. Points to a tiny name on the map above a red dot. That's Animate. He lifts his finger and points west. His finger stops on another red dot. Knocks the keep. That's where high water lives. Party set off west. Party stop for the night several kilometers away. After sorcerer casts alarm, party set up watch. Rogue on first watch, but as rest of party sleep, cleric sits up with him. What no Milana? Rogue shrugs. She's a vampire spawn. Works for high water. Usual shit. Cleric nods. She no burn sun. Just city? Rogue shrugs. I don't know if she'll burn if she leaves the city. If she follows us, it'll probably be at night. Honestly, I'm really wishing we were further away right now. Cleric pauses for a while. Why hate Grim the Knight? Rogue rubs his nose and shrugs. Bit personal. We've only known each other a day. Cleric nods. Lose someone? Rogue's face goes deadpan. We've all lost people. Only body die. Soul no die. Body just meat. Rogue looks at him. Would you say that if it were one of your friends? Cleric nods. Milana kill friend. Body stay. Soul move on. Rogue looks at him with curiosity. Why leaves animate then? Don't you want revenge? If she no here, she no threat. Rogue shakes his head. How can you look at it like that? People mourn when close ones die. We show emotion. Emotion cloud judgment. Friend hunt in beastlands. No need mourn. Living need survive. Dead can rest. Then why fight? Emotions drive people. Fight to save swamp. High water threat. Threat dealt with, we go home. Rogue pauses but says nothing. Both sit in silence for a long time, looking out into the night for any sign of pursuers. Rogue eventually heads off to bed. Next morning party set off further west. As they're moving, fighter rolls for a perception check. 19. Something smells off. After a bit of searching, he identifies which direction it's coming from. Fighter informs party, and as sneakily as they can, they move closer to take a look. As they look over a hill, party sees a small pack of gnolls moving around. They seem tired and slow, but one is making sure they keep moving. The off smell is undoubtedly their fur, which is clearly bloodstained even from this distance. Party content with moving away when one knoll turns his head. He begins sniffing. He turns and begins speaking in abyssal to his pack and they all begin sniffing too. Rogue taps fighter. We should leave. I don't want to fight if we don't have to. Fighter shrugs. They no fight so no run. Well they've smelled something, and I'm fairly sure I know what it is. He points to bits of meat that fighter is keeping in grave skull. Fighter picks one up and sniffs it. Rogue gets a whiff and almost throws up. Man, you shouldn't eat that shit. We cook. That's not the point. They're distracted from their argument when Ranger points out that the gnolls are approaching. Ranger looks at party. Unless we want kill, we talk. Everyone looks at Rogue. Rogue shakes his head. FCK that. You do it. You've got scales. Sorcerer shakes his head. Gobby speak best. Rogue glares at him. First of all, don't call me Gobby. Second, FCK that. They'll eat me. Fighter, we eat first if attack. But I don't want to. Noz getting very close. Fighter finally shrugs and nods. I talk hairy fleshies. Starts to crest the hill. Rogue jumps up and runs ahead of him. If you talk we'll all die. I'll talk. He comes over the top of the hill. I describe how the Nolls begin yipping as they see him. Ooh fck this. What am I doing? Rogue steps forward and raises his hands. Hey guys. Let's just calm down here. We're all friends, right? Nolls yip at him more. Rogue shakes his head. Goblin not food. I know where you can get some though. There's a city east of here. 
Zanimat. You can have all the food you want. The Null who had been keeping them moving raises his head and speaks in a horrible, guttural voice. Give up goblin. We can't enter a city. So, sit there and let us have our food. I have food. You can have some of my food. You don't need to eat me. Rolls persuasion. 13. Some of the Nulls begin looking at their captain. From this distance, the rogue can see that some of them are looking extremely thin, as if they hadn't eaten in days. Captain shakes his head. We'll take your food and eat you too. We've got a lot of mouths to feed. Rogue shakes his head. You don't want to eat me. I'm really small. I'll barely fill you up. Several of the Nulls move closer. Rogue pulls out his new crossbow. Come any closer and I'll blow out your f king brains buddy. I've got a weapon and I ain't afraid to use it. Rolls intimidation. 7. Null captain laughs. You can't get us all, and you'll only piss us off. Rogue nods and points the crossbow at the captain. I can still get you though. Null shrugs. Then I'll take my place at ye now's side. Rogue realizes this really isn't working. Null does too. Enough of this. Bring me his head. Nulls begin streaming forward. Rogue releases the shot at the captain who barely manages to dodge out of the way. Fight ensues. Nulls about to reach him when lizard folk crests the hill. Fighter looks at me. I want to jump down the hill. Fighter runs and jumps. Rolls acrobatics. 15. A null barely gets a chance to look up before the fighter comes flying down, holding his spear in two hands. Nat 20. He slams the spear right in the middle of the Null's chest. The Null falls to the ground, fighter still on top. The two roll for a bit, tripping two other Nulls on their descent. Fighter gets up first and buries his hand axe in the Null's skull before standing up and yanking out his spear. Realizes he's surrounded by Nulls. Offok. Oh JPG. Sorcerer twins fireball and nukes the battlefield. Realizes too late that the fighter is down there too. Rogue almost killed as Null tries to bite off his face. Ranger helps by biting Null. HFW Null bites him back. Short scuffle later Ranger comes out on top. Cleric kills one Null by casting inflict wounds and punching him in the face. Party finally kill all of the Nulls. Skinning proceeds. Party collect a few weapons from the Nulls. Rogue and Ranger don't find any replacement bolts. After that's done, party move off. A while later they set up to camp for the night. After setting alarms and organizing watches, party settle down to sleep. On his watch, Ranger hears a snap in a nearby thicket of trees. He lifts his crossbow and looks for anything. Rolls perception. 16. As he looks in the trees, he sees the still form of a wolf staring back at him. He shoots the ground in front of it to try scare it off. HFW the wolf doesn't so much as flinch. Eventually, the wolf slinks off back into the trees. Ranger wakes up fighter for his watch and goes to sleep, undoubtedly a little intimidated. Game ends. Be me, lizard DM. Be not me, lizard folk sorcerer, lizard folk cleric, lizard folk ranger, lizard folk fighter, goblin rogue. Party wakes up from their long rest. Having left Xanimate, party heading west for Noxva Keep, home of Baron Highwater. Move off quickly. As they're leaving, Ranger mentions the wolf, and suggests that they might still be being followed. Rogue shrugs. I don't know any vampires that are able to turn into wolves. Especially Milona. She's not a full vampire anyway. Ranger, we be careful. Milana catch up. I don't know if she can move in the sunlight outside of Xanimate, but if she could, I think she would have caught up to us by now. Fighter, does sleep? Rogue shakes his head. I don't think so. She goes around the city at night but is on duty during the day too. Party reflect on the horrifying thought that she could catch up to them any day. Begin moving off. Walk for a fair bit before party come across a cave. Rogue goes up to it and smells the entrance. Oh man, that right there smells like death itself, don't it? Smell is a mixture of sweat, spoiled meat and decay. Sorcerer walks up to it. I want to shoot a fire bolt inside. A small bolt of fire launches inside, 
illuminating the interior before hitting a wall. What did I see? Roll's perception. 16. He saw several skeletons laying against walls, as well as a large body lying down inside. He also sees several weapons in the corner, as well as a few stacks of coins. The rogue's eyes go wide. I want that. Sorcerer shakes his head. Something there. Eat person. Rogue smiles. I'll be really quiet. Ranger shakes his head. Don't do it. Rogue shrugs. Fine. He pulls out a piece of wood from his pocket and ties a piece of string around it. He says a word, and a ripple appears in front of him. He holds out a small bag. Bring me as much money as you can hold. The bag is lifted out of his hands and the ripple disappears. Sorcerer uses light on a bone in the cave, making the light red. Whole party freezes as the figure in the cave shifts. After a few seconds, it rolls over and a loud snore echoes through the cave. Party can now see more in the cave. They watch as several coins begin lifting into the bag. Start making clinks as the bag fills. When the bag is full, it begins floating back towards the rogue. He smiles and places the coin bag in his backpack. Party begin contemplating what to do. Sorcerer thinks for a moment and looks at me. Can I cast detect magic? He does. He raises an eyebrow as I describe how a bag begins to light up with a variety of colors. He looks at the rest of the party. I want. Ranger frowns. Want what? Bag. Rogue looks at him before looking at the unseen servant. Get the bag and bring it to me. Unseen servant moves off. The bag begins to lift up. Suddenly, the figure's snoring stops. It shifts, and party C and I open. Oh shit. JPG. Bag almost out of cave when figure rises to its feet and grabs a massive club. Figure looks around, and sees party standing outside of cave. It lets out a roar and begins marching towards them. Bag leaves cave. Sorcerer runs over and places his hand on the side of the wall. I want to cast Earth Tremor at second level and direct it into the walls. Rolls damage. Full damage. Whole cave entrance begins shaking. Figure steps towards the light just as the cave entrance collapses. When dust clears, party see massive figure partially buried in the stone. It's a hill giant. Party watch on as giant tries to extract itself from the stone. Fighter, I want to cut off his hand while he's trapped. Walks over and raises his hand axe. Hill giant sees what's about to happen and tries to move his hand away. Fighter, I've changed my mind. He keeps moving. I'm going to get my rope and strangle him. Fighter climbs on giant's back and wraps rope around its neck. Giant immediately tries to grab him off its back. Sorcerer steps up and blasts giant in the face with poison spray. Giant begins coughing and trying to wipe tears out of its eyes. Slowly being strangled. Cleric steps forward. This cruel. Kill quick. Giant grabs fighter and throws him off his back. Sorcerer reaches forward and casts second level sleep on it. Its eyes flutter for a second before it hits the ground unconscious. Sorcerer, I honestly didn't expect that to work. Fighter draws dagger, but Ranger puts out his hand. No wake it. We leave. Milana catch up. Party agree and decide to leave. Sorcerer looks in the bag and sees it's full of small stick-like objects. He takes one out and observes it. Notices magical inscribing on the side. He places it back and notices that there are 10 of these sticks. He closes the bag and puts it in his backpack. Party continue moving west. Night falls. Party make camp near woods but remain on a hill, so they have a clear view of the land. Rogue summons unseen servants to begin moving the coins from one pile to another so he can count them. Yes, he's so lazy he used a spell slot. He counts 53 gold pieces. Party eventually go to sleep after organizing a watch schedule. On fighter's watch, he hears a sound in the nearby woods. He looks over but originally can't see anything. Perception check. 14. As he scans the trees, he sees a pair of eyes staring back at him. He nudges the ranger, who wakes up almost instantly. Silently, fighter points towards eyes. Ranger looks at the eyes and pulls out his crossbow. 
Eyes disappear. Ranger gives Fighter his crossbow and goes back to sleep. Party wake next day. Ranger immediately goes over to the woods and inspects the land near where he saw the eyes. He finds wolf footprints. I want to roll survival to see where it went. 8 in total. Party follow the trail for a little while, deeper into the forest, until they come across a river. The trail disappears there. Party disappointed but decide to keep on moving. Party leave woods and keep moving west. They come across an absolutely tiny town and Rogue looks down at it. I want an ale. When he sees it the rest of the party don't understand, he shrugs. Alcohol. I haven't had a drink in 4 days. Fighter shakes his head. Saw drink water yesterday. Rogue sighs. Can we go to the town please? At least for a little while? Party finally agree. Rogue disguises himself as a gnome and the party enter the town, making their way to a tavern. Party sits at a table, getting odd looks from all around the room. Waitress reluctantly comes over. Hi, what can I get you, sirs? Rogue smiles at her. An ale for me please and water for my friends. Waitress nods and writes it down on a small note. And food? Fighter pulls piece of meat out of grave skull. Woman shrieks and backs away. Rogue sighs and gives her an uneasy smile. I apologize for my friend. He isn't as well versed in society as we are. Woman nods slowly. I I I'll get your drinks. She leaves and brings back the drinks, handing them shakily to the party. Party drink it, Rogue gives her two gold coins. For the trouble. Woman thanks him and pockets the coins. Go back into town. Ranger and Rogue buy more crossbow bolts while Fighter buys himself a battle axe. Cleric asks around for a local church but doesn't find one. Party leave town. Party continue heading west until night falls. Party made aware to be on the lookout for the wolf, but they're not sure what to do if they see it. A few watches go by with no incident, low perception rolls. On Cleric's watch however, he sees those same eyes staring at the party from the woods. After looking at it for a moment, Cleric casts Detect Evil and Good. He becomes intrigued when the wolf doesn't show up on either. However, looking at it, and its intense stare, he doesn't think it's normal either. He takes a leaf out of his bag and puts it in his mouth. Claire passes me a note. I nod, and he rolls a d20. Party very confused. Cleric, so? Cleric frowns as the smell of decay and blood fills the area around him. The once cloudy sky clears, and the moon shines bright over the surrounding area. The wolf is undisturbed. I want to go over to it. Cleric stands up and begins walking towards the wolf. It just stares at him as he gets closer and closer, barely seeming to breathe as he nears. He gets close enough to touch it. I want to put my hand on its head. Slowly, he extends his hand expecting it to bite at any moment. Surprisingly it doesn't. His hand touches the fur, and he gives a small smile. I'd like to cast protection from good and evil. The wolf suddenly begins to howl and yip as if it was in pain, and it falls to the ground. Cleric watches on as wolf begins twitching and its breathing becomes more and more rapid. Player is horrified. He adores dogs and has two huskies. After several seconds of seizuring on the ground, the wolf goes still. Cleric crouches beside it and places a hand on its side. He can feel its breath coming shallowly and its heart beating incredibly fast. The wolf moves, raising its head towards him. He holds out his hand. I cast animal friendship. Party's jaws drop. He holds out a piece of meat and the wolf takes it. After it's done, it licks him on the hand. He smiles. Hello friend. Bad gone. You be with me now. Wolf gives him another lick but seems to be too weak to stand. Cleric picks it up and walks it back to the camp. He wakes up the rest of the party after setting it down. Ranger looks at it. Is this the same wolf? He asks me. He rolls a perception check. It is. He goes to place his hand on it but the wolf growls at him. The cleric places his hand on it. The wolf calms down and licks his hand. Fighter looks at him. What you do? Cleric shrugs. He friendly. I remind him. Fighter looks at me. I want to roll insight on, Cleric. 
12. The cleric is hiding something, but he's not sure what, or why. Rogue looks at the cleric. Is he gonna eat me if I sleep? Cause I don't want to be a chew toy. Cleric shakes his head. He tired. He no eat if he no hungry. Cleric gives Wolf another piece of meat. It happily takes it. Party go to sleep. Cleric sleeping beside his new fluffy friend. Game ends. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Fighter, Goblin Rogue. Party Wake. Cleric player is very happy to learn that his fluffy friend has stayed around. He looks at Wolf and pats it. Wolf wakes up and looks at him. Hello friend. Wolf gives him a small lick on the hand before standing up and doing a big stretch. Lizard folk look on with curiosity. Cleric strokes the wolf. Fighter frowns. Why do that? Cleric shrugs. Fur feel nice. Fighter accepts the explanation and drops the subject. Rogue opens map and looks at it. We're about two weeks from Noxvakeep. He then points to a small grey patch on the map. He looks at me. Would I know what this is? Rolls a straight intelligence check. 17. I pass him a note. Rogue looks at it and nods his head approvingly. There's a ruin about a day northwest of here. It's not too far from where we're going, and it might be worth having a look. Ranger looks at map and turns to Rogue. Why go there? Rogue shrugs. Ruins are cool. There's a whole bunch of stuff we could find in there. Gold, weapons, treasure, mysteries. Fighter leans in. Weapon good. Find weapon. Party agree to go to the ruin. Party spend the day going over there. Cleric spends a lot of time feeding the wolf and talking to it. Rest of party intrigued but decide not to question it. Rogue still wary that wolf is going to eat him. Wolf not helping by licking its lips after eating meat and then glancing at the rogue. Tell your dog to stop staring at me. He's giving me the creeps. Cleric looks at wolf and then back at rogue. He no dog. Rogue sighs. Tell the wolf that it needs to stop staring at me. However, you do that. Cleric shrugs. He no eat you. He look though. Rogue sighs and tries to ignore the wolf from then on. As night falls, party about to make camp when they see something in the distance. They get closer and see the ruins, illuminated by moonlight and hidden amongst a small grove of trees. Party decide to make camp a few hundred meters away from it. During the sorcerer's watch, he looks at me. Can I spend an hour of my watch trying to figure out what the sticks do? I warn him that in that hour his perception check will take a minus 5 penalty, homebrew rule based on distractions. Accepts that. Rolls an arcana check. 14. Spending the better part of an hour, he inspects the sticks, trying to read the inscribing on their sides. He comes to the conclusion that they're essentially more durable spell scrolls. He can't figure out what the spells might be, but he figures that they cover a variety of schools of magic. Cleric's watch is next. The wolf comes up and places its head on his lap. Cleric looks at it and reluctantly pats its head. You weird friend. I like though. Party wake up next morning. Make their way to the ruins. It's a low building with a crushed in dome and a few side buildings. Might have been a temple in normal conditions. As they near it, the wolf begins to growl and refuses to go any closer to it. Fighter looks at it and then looks at Cleric. Why growl? Cleric places his hand on the wolf. I'd like to use speak with animals. I pass Cleric a note. Cleric's eyes widen. He no like. Smell. Rogue raises an eyebrow. He's a wolf, 
Of course he can smell. Cleric shakes his head. Smell bad. Smell death. Rogue nods. Well okay then. FCK that. I'm leaving then. Begins to walk away. Fighter grabs him. Why leave? Rogue shakes his head. FCK that. I'm calling it. We're going to go in there. See some spooky shit. Someone's going to get possessed. And they're going to try kill all of us. Fighter shakes his head. If attack, we eat it. Rogue stares at him. Okay, you go in then. I'm staying with the wolf. Have fun with the ghosts. Fighter shrugs. Begins walking into the ruins. Ranger grabs his shoulder. We need to be careful. If we go in knowing there's something in there but don't take any precautions, we're asking for trouble. Fighter nods. Lizard folk prepare themselves and go inside. Rogue gives them a WTF are you doing? Look. He looks at the wolf. Goes to pet it. Wolf growls at him. FCK you too then. Inside the ruins, lizard folk begin exploring. Ranger lights a torch. Cleric casts detect evil and good. Immediately gets a bad feeling. Something bad happened here. It used to be a temple, but it was desecrated by something. Party enter room. Fighter sees small chest in the corner. He walks over and sees that it's locked. Grabs a piece of rubble and slams it into the lock, breaking it. He opens the chest, finding several coins inside. Fighter looks at Cleric and raises coins. Can I take them or are they important? Cleric shrugs. The dead don't need money. Fighter can't argue with that logic. Party move into other rooms. They don't find much besides a lot of holy symbols. Until they find the altar. Fighter looks at the altar and sees an open book on it. He looks at book and tries to read it. Why do fleshies put words on this? Why not just say it? Party can't figure it out. Ranger rolls a perception check. 18. He notices a small scrape on the floor besides the altar. He walks over. I want to push the altar over. He pushes it over. Altar slams into the ground and emits a loud boom that echoes through the entire temple. Party stare at him. Ranger. Uh, I f get up, didn't I? Ranger shrugs. Ah well, is there anything under the altar? He sees a small hole with a small chest in it. Ranger pulls the chest out and opens it. Finds a gold hilted short sword. The blade is carved with religious symbols. Ranger takes it out and slides it into his bag. Then party hears a shuffling deeper in the temple. Cleric. Ooh. That's not good. He peers out of the room and looks down a corridor. He sees a hooded figure come around a corner and begin shuffling towards them, feet dragging along the ground. Cleric, I'd like to roll a perception to see if I can identify what it is. 4. As he's trying to figure out what it is, it lifts its head ever so slightly, and he sees a pair of eyes stare out at him. Constitution save. 10. Cleric lets out a yell as pain racks his body. The rest of the party run over to him. Don't look at it he says as ominously as possible. Party sprint out of the room. Everyone avoids looking at it. Except the sorcerer. He hears the sounds of several shuffling feet and turns to look down the corridor. The creature is barely 20 feet from him, and behind that, at least three others shuffling down the corridor. He can't help looking at its eyes from this distance. Constitution save. 3. Sorcerer drops to the ground, hitting the stone floors with a horrible thud. Fighter turns and sees his body. Looks up. Constitution save. 15. His whole body shivering, he barely avoids staring at the eyes. He grabs the sorcerer and tries to fireman him. Strength check. Nat 20. Fighter slings sorcerer over his shoulder and begins sprinting down the corridor. I've got him. Keep running. Cleric uses healing word on the sorcerer. Party sprint out of the ruins. Rogue stares at them and raises an eyebrow. What did I tell you? You saw some spooky shit huh? Who got possessed? Ranger grabs Rogue around the waist and lifts him off the ground. Rogue yelling out slurs as Party flees from the ruins. Party get about 200 meters away before they finally take a moment to breathe. 
Rogue gets out of the ranger's arms and contemplates kicking him but decides against it. Ranger looks back. Sees cloaked figures standing in the doorway, but not entering the sunlight. Party agree to get as far away as possible before night falls. Party move their camp much further from the ruins before they finally relax. Rogue points an accusing finger at the ranger. First, never do that again. Second, what the hell happened? We explore ruin. Ruin have monster. We run. Rogue nods. Okay. Okay. Pauses. You get me anything? Fighter pulls out money while ranger pulls out sword. Rogue's eyes go wide. So nobody's dead? Ranger nods. No one dead. Rogue smiles. Totally worth it then. Party make camp for the night near some woods. As night falls, people begin taking watches. Moonless night. Pretty creepy. JPG. Cleric's watch. Wolf by his side again. Suddenly, Wolf begins growling at the woods. Cleric summons the sword and stares into the dark. Can't see shit. He grabs the ranger's crossbow and casts light on one of the bolts. He launches it at the woods. The bolt sticks into a tree and for a brief moment, Cleric sees a shadowy figure standing beside a few trees. Cleric wakes everyone up. Party prepare their weapons and stare out at the woods. Wolf calms down. Rogue. Okay. FCK this. We're leaving. FCK waiting until dawn. We should just go. Ranger shakes his head. We defended here. Nowhere person is. Rogue stares at him. You're kidding right? We're staying here even though we know someone's out there? He gets no response. Party adjust their watch so that there's always two people on watch. Cleric stays with Wolf. Game ends. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Ranger, Lizard Folk Fighter, Goblin Rogue. Party decide to leave in the morning after seeing figure in the woods. Rogue didn't get a full long rest, but he's relatively okay. Party continue through the day, leaving the woods behind in an effort to distance themselves from the figure. Party decide to camp next to a river as night falls, setting up a watch. Ranger and fighter on first watch, looking out for figure. Nothing happens on their watch. Rogue and sorcerer next. Roll perceptions. 11 and 15. As rest of party sleep, the two of them split slightly off from the group in order to watch from a small patch of grass. Sorcerer thinks he sees something in the nearby woods. Taps Rogue. Rogue lifts up crossbow as Sorcerer casts light on a stone. Throws it where he thinks the person is. Doesn't see anything. Both staring away from river when Rogue hears the faintest sound above the trickle of water. A hissing sound. Rogue turns to look at the river. Doesn't see anything. Rolls perception. 16. Hears the faintest sounds of drops nearby. Looks at Sorcerer. Wake the others. Sorcerer sneaks away to wake the others as Rogue begins to back away. The dripping stops. He turns around, trying to locate the source. Sees a face right next to him. Rogue lets out a scream as Milana grabs him by the throat and lifts him above the ground. Rogue trying desperately to kick her as she holds him aloft. Kicks do nothing. She smiles, baring her teeth. Then she bites him. Rogue screams become frenzied as she bites. Milana gets hit by magic missile. She gives a yell of pain and drops the rogue. Party standing there. She gives them a smile. Oh boy. I get to kill all of you. Roll initiative. Fighter runs forward, swinging his battle axe. She blocks the first strike and ducks underneath the second. Ranger hits her in the shoulder with a crossbow bolt, but she laughs and tears it out. Cleric summons the sword and swings at her, opening a cut on her arm. Her scythe glows red hot, illuminating her face in a devilish hue. She swings it, cutting the fighter's leg. Swings it at the cleric. Scythe buries itself into his side, going through his armor like tissue paper. He lets out a grunt of pain. Wolf leaps into action, sinking its teeth around her leg. She yells and tries to shake it off. Rogue gets to his feet, looking paler, and draws the short sword. Cuts open the back of her leg. She shakes the wolf off and laughs, 
Turning towards the rogue. Was that supposed to hurt? Sorcerer launches lightning bolt. Forgets the fact that it moves in a line. Milana passes her save and laughs as the lightning courses through her body. Fighter fails his save. Lightning hurts him a lot. Tries to hit her but arms won't work properly. Ranger misses both shots with crossbow. Cleric tries to hit her with guiding bolt. She ducks out of the way, laughing. Wolf tries to bite her again, but she keeps it at bay with a kick. She raises her scythe and a blast of fire launches at the sorcerer. He yells as fire bursts across his body. The scales around the injury briefly turn red before returning to normal color. Rogue stabs the sword through her calf. Still does minimal damage. Smack sword with his hand like a TV remote to try get it to do something special. Milana blocks the fighter's attacks. Sorcerer hits Milana with a second level magic missile. Ranger shoots her in the chest but misses the second shot. Cleric opens her up with a sword, sending her reeling. Her laugh turns to a pained grimace as the wolf takes a piece out of her arm. She slices open the cleric's face before turning to the rogue. Nat 20. Full damage. She raises the scythe, eyes shining in the red light. Brings it down on him, impaling him through the chest. Rogue drops the sword and puts his hands on the scythe blade, not even feeling them burn. Milana pulls the scythe blade out and he drops to the floor. Fighter hits her in the back with the axe and then slams it into her leg. She stumbles, turning to take a magic missile to the face. Ranger shoots her in the chest twice, and her eyes go wide with something bordering fear. Cleric runs up and places his hand on her face, hitting her with a level 3 guiding bolt. She screams as radiant damage burns through her face. She kicks him away and turns, sprinting off into the darkness. Ranger hits her with a crossbow bolt on her way out, but she only stumbles. Cleric runs over to the rogue, who's staring up at the stars with dead eyes. Cleric pulls out the diamond and casts revivify. Moment passes. Rogue's chest heaves as he lets out a shuddering breath. Wound doesn't really close, but he's alive. Party stare into the darkness, looking for Milana. Cleric takes a second to cast cure wounds on himself. Party hear fast footsteps echoing from all around them. Have no idea where she is. Wolf suddenly growls. Fighter sees something out of his eye and turns in time to see Milana sprinting from the dark, scythe raised to strike the cleric. He blocks the strike, almost being sent to the ground by the power of the strike. Her wounds have mostly closed up, and her eyes are full of murderous intent. Sorcerer hits her with a magic missile and she glares at him. I'm getting really effing sick of that. Ranger hits her in the shoulder with a crossbow bolt and hits her in the leg. Milana swings the scythe, bringing it through the fighter's leg. She steps past him and tries to decapitate the cleric. The sword blocks the strike. Cleric stands up and hits her in the chest with a guiding bolt. She hisses before being interrupted by the fighter smashing her under the chin with the blunt side of his axe. Her jaw breaks and as she reels back, he buries the axe in her neck. She growls and yanks it out. Ranger pistol whips her with the crossbow and then shoots her in the forehead. She falls to her knees. Sorcerer hits her with witch bolt. She yells out as green lightning arcs around her. She gets up grabbing the ranger and biting him. He falls to his knees, 1 HP left. The cleric shears open her back with the sword. Milana hits the wolf on the snout with the shaft of the scythe as it jumps at her. Fighter grabs her and tears out a piece of her neck with his teeth. Lightning hits her again from which bolt. Milana turns and slashes cleric across the face, knocking him out. She then brings the scythe in a wicked arc, burying it in the ranger's chest. He drops to the ground, taking death saves. Fighter slashes her across the face with the axe, and she screams. I want to spot a kicker into the river. Rolls strength. Nat 20. Milana gives a shocked gasp as she tumbles back into the river. She begins screaming as the water burns her flesh. Her head goes under the water, cutting off her screams as she's pulled downstream. Sorcerer drops to his knees next to the cleric. Tries to do a medicine check. 15. Cleric stabilized. Ranger rolls death save. Nat 1. Fighter tries to do a medicine check on the ranger. 9. 
party can do nothing but pray as Ranger rolls his death save. 4. Table goes silent as Ranger breathes his final breath and goes still. Fighter closes his eyes with his fingers. Rest now friend. You are destined for the beast lands. You will join the eternal hunt. Game ends. Be me, Lizard DM. Be not me, Lizard Folk Sorcerer, Lizard Folk Cleric, Lizard Folk Fighter, Goblin Rogue. The sun rises on the new morning. Party sitting beside body of ranger. They skinned him and turned him into meat. The train doesn't stop for anyone. Fighter looks at River. We go after her. Rogue, you pushed her into a river. She's probably dead. She killed too many to trust to die. Make sure. She could be anywhere. And if she's dust, you'll never find her. Fighter thinks for a moment. I want to throw a stick in the river and see how fast it goes. Stick moving fairly fast, but party could keep up with it if they kept a good pace. Fighter looks at Sun. If she no get out quickly, she die. We follow river short time. If no prince, she dead. Party agree to this plan. Begin following the river. Get about 500 meters when cleric rolls a perception check. 18. As he scans the bank, he sees a disturbance in the mud, the shape of a person. Cleric thinks for a moment. How deep is the print? Almost 3 inches. She was lying there for a very long time. Cleric points out the shape and the fighter growls. If had gone looking, we just kill her then. Party see footprints leading away. They're heavy and uneven, as if Milana had struggled to walk for a few hundred meters. Party follow the prince for a long time. Prince reach a forest and disappear. Party think for a moment. Sorcerer, she figure out we follow her. Rolls a perception check. 16. I tell him that the last prince stops at the base of a tree. Sorcerer, she in trees. Sorcerer thinks for a moment. I cast fly on myself. Sorcerer lifts off the ground and floats up. Sees an odd looking group of buildings among the trees. Comes back down and relays the information to the party. Party move on, heading towards the buildings. As they enter the area, Rogue makes himself appear as a gnome. As they walk in, they look around at the buildings, noticing their simple style and hide walls. Wolf constantly sniffing. Lots of good smells here. That's when they hear a word get shouted. Party look around, realizing they are surrounded by a group of large, tusked humanoids. Orcs. They walked into an orc camp. A large orc, heavily scarred and wearing pretty good armor steps forward into the makeshift circle. Leave now or you'll never see your home again. Rogue drops the disguise. Hey buddy. Calm down now, we don't want any trouble. We're just looking for someone. Orc crosses his huge arms. What is a goblin doing with lizard folk? Rogue gives a nervous laugh. I'm not too sure myself. But they're hunting the same person I am, and they're pretty good at what they do. Orc grunts. You hunting a woman? Rogue pauses. Describe her. Small, pale, black hair. You hunting her? She's the one. Did you see where she went? She killed three of us with her bare hands before we could drive her off. She moved north towards the human village. Fighter steps forward. She of scythe. Orc raises an eyebrow. She no have scythe, dumbing down his words to imitate the fighter. Rogue nods and gives a winning smile. In that case, we have no further quarry with you. Let us go on our way and we'll kill her. Orc shakes his head. I don't trust a goblin and a few lizards to kill her. She's a powerful one. You'll need help. Orc gestures to two orcs who step forward. They'll go with you, and they'll come back when she's dead. You make sure of that. Rogue shakes his head. We can do it by ourselves. You don't need to risk your men. Rolls persuasion. 19. Rogue, we've tangled with her before. We've got this. She killed three of my kind. I want revenge. Rogue shrugs. We'll bring you her head. For a price. Orc laughs. You're funny goblin. What do you want for this? Rogue looks around, trying to figure out what he might want. Suddenly a smile comes onto the player's face. A favor. 
Lizard folk stare at him blankly. Orc raises a bushy eyebrow. A favor? Rogue nods. If we bring you her head, you do something for me when I ask. Orc laughs. We may never see each other again. But if we do, I know I'll have a friend amongst orcs. Orc thinks for a moment. Steps forward and holds out his hand. I, Yurig Kijahath, chief of the Yuruda clan, accept your proposal. Rogue shakes his hand. His small hand disappears in the depths of Yurig's grasp. Party leave the orc camp, a promise under their belt. Party spend a large portion of the day trying to find the surprisingly difficult to locate human village. Finally though, they do find it, as the sun is beginning its descent in the sky. Rogue activates his disguise again as they enter the town. They don't see anyone walking the streets. Sorcerer, where we go? Fighter looks around, go tavern. Ask people if see Milona. Party agree to do so. They enter the tavern. And see the bloodbath inside. Table goes silent as I describe the interior. Blood coats the walls and floors. Almost every single table has been disturbed, and there are bodies everywhere. Rogue becomes stone faced and he's clearly disturbed. Lizard folk stare around, not too fast. Cleric looks at the walls, seeing several huge words written in blood. Follow me and the number will grow. Rogue, how old are the victims? Most are middle aged adults. Some are elderly. However, cradled in the arms of those who tried to protect them, you see the still bodies of smaller, younger victims. Rogue nods slowly. He leaves the tavern. Lizard folk look on for a moment. Fighter appropriately decides he has enough meat for now, and leaves the bodies. As they leave the tavern, they see the rogue inspecting the ground around the tavern. Rogue turns to Cleric. She can't have spilled that much blood without getting some on her. Get your dog to track her or something. Cleric nods and talks to Wolf. After a quick sniff of the bloodbath and a survival check, the wolf begins moving away from the town. The party follow it well away from the tavern, and after about an hour of walking, they find a large hill. The hill has a cave digging into it, going deep enough for it to become pitch black. Wolf stops there and turns back to the cleric, as if to say she's in there. Party look inside, but can't see a thing. Rogue, if she's in there, it would be extremely stupid to go inside. Party agrees. Fighter thinks for a moment. Then we wait. Set trap. She come out night. We trap her. She no go back inside, she no leave either. Party plan a bit on how to best make their trap, all the while, the sun is getting lower in the sky. Party finally agree on their plan and set it in motion. As they wait, the last rays of light shining across the ground, the rogue goes and sits next to the cleric. Why did you do it? You could have let me die and your friend might still be alive. Cleric looks at him and shrugs. Protect our own. But I'm not one of you. Cleric shakes his head. You are now. The sun slowly begins to fall until it finally passes the horizon. Darkness overtakes the surrounding area. After about an hour of waiting, party hear faint footsteps emerging from the cave. Party prepare themselves. A figure steps out of the cave. Cleric casts old person. Figure fails their save and gets locked in place. Fighter jumps out from behind a bush and runs in, battle axe swinging. The figure lets out a cry of pain as the battle axe buries itself in the creature's neck. It lets out a strangled gurgle and collapses to its knees, axe head still buried in its neck. Sorcerer casts light. Table goes silent as I describe the dying figure on the floor. Small, covered in scales and a tail. A kobold. They were duped. Fighter turns back to the cave in time to see a wall of crossbow bolts emerge from the darkness. Fighter becomes a pincushion and has time to let out a small low before he hits the floor. Roll initiative. Cleric uses healing word on fighter to get him back up before casting light inside the cave entrance. They see about 8 pairs of eyes reflecting the light back at everyone. Rogue disguises himself as a kobold and attempts to sneak into the cave. 18. With so much confusion going on, none of the kobolds notice as he slides into their ranks. Fighter stands up and makes his way over to the kobolds, using second wind to boost his health a little bit. 
he starts swinging. Sorcerer launches magic missile, maiming two kobolds and killing a third. Some of the kobolds draw daggers and begin stabbing, covering the others as they escape further into the cave. Rogue looks briefly back at the party and points at the cleric. The cleric hears Rogue's voice in his head. I'm disguised as one of them and I'm going in. I'll find out if there are any reinforcements and find Milona. Rogue sprints away into the darkness with the rest of the kobolds. Cleric, no engage. They kill you. Recites the information to the party as they kill the last of the kobolds holding them back. The cleric heals up the fighter a bit. Sorcerer casts light on a crossbow bolt from one of the dead kobolds. Fires it into the cave. Bolt makes its way into the cave before hitting a wall. It's way deeper and more intricate than they could ever imagine. Party considering whether to follow the rogue when they hear the faintest of voices calling out from the darkness. You'd better not make me wait down here. I'd be ever so disappointed if you were too afraid to fight me after coming all this way. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.